tell you, we, uh, we've been, uh, we were selected seventh, geez, it's been, I mean, we've been working on it since 07, we've been through three administrations now, and so finally, we've executed the ground lease, and Sean and I are here actually to meet with the city today, but Sean's been kind of firming up, at least, we have 60 acres, and so it'll be three 20-acre phases over 10 years, but um, Sean's just about got the first 20 acres where we want it, and so it, it, pretty soon it'll be to a point where we can give you a plan to start uh, that, that can be put into a model at that point. It'd be, it'd be interesting. You, you the one thing I can guarantee you about the plan is it will change, but, yeah. it's, but it's pretty, yeah. Yeah. you know, we, we kind of, uh, when we're trying to create urban environments, it's interesting the number of plans you go through, and what you figure out is good urbanism is actually always based on a pretty simple grid and plan, and so we always end up gravitating back to that, yeah. and so it's always a process of simplification, but the other thing that does is it gives us flexibility over time, and sort of building footprints can become different things without sort of destroying the integrity of the, the urban plan, and so um, so some of the uses may change, but I think uh, the plan in many respects is... is the one yeah. point, fix, so. if you have a, if you like to show what your plan to uh, you know, university thesis makers, and then uh, people who are using those facilities, you are more than welcome to use our facilities to right. show your plan. And I guess this is uh, this is what you know this BIM cave system is designed for. Mm -hmm. And unlike other uh, cave system, it's, you know, for example, with the University of Illinois at Chicago, this system was pr uh, originally designed for multiple people to take a look at the three D model together right. to make a collective decision. All other cave system you might have chance to take a look is only just one person. One person's you know, virtual experience versus many people's experience mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and then uh, make some collective decisions. So yeah, that's I guess the main difference. And, and let me really emphasize what to me is is a key advantage of the system Dr. Kang has put together. It runs on commodity commercial software. Right. Autodesk Natus works. I can load a 3D Studio model into it, an, an AutoCAD model into it, a Revit model, a MicroStation model. It doesn't really matter what five tool minutes. the architect needs. It takes five minutes to load it into here wow. and be walking around. Actually, you so, can uh, understand about 20 yeah. 20 different uh, computer yeah. models. And, and actually it's an integration platform, so if you're one architect uses MicroStation and one yeah. uses Revit, one uses 3D Studio, we can load them all at the same time right. in the Navis Works. Right. Yeah. Uh, locate them properly yeah. on the you site can and all uh, of them together walk through model. it. Yeah. Can, you, yeah. can you overlay Google Earth? Sure. Too? Sure. You can uh, take images from Google Earth yeah. and then uh, kind of uh, snake them into the Navis Work. Okay. Yeah. So you can See so actual apply them as surface maps, maps onto the mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. And and what our, our group is working towards is um, uh, is parametric models of uh, of the structures. So uh, if you change the footprint, we we take the design and change the footprint. And it all automatically facades adjust themselves and yep. if you like the facade to be different we maybe key in a few different parameters and we get a new facade right. uh, and, and so you know with tools like Revit we can change things so quickly and then knowing that in, you know we can change it in five minutes or ten minutes save it load it into here in another five minutes and have a you know and be able to actually do an interactive kind of environment, you know, yep. study of them. So we want to link the sensitivities to it. So yeah. we, you know, we, we only take out the quantities, redo the designs, yeah. and then automatically get a, a sensitivity that pops yeah. out the yeah. other and side. Then, and the Revit model actually has, and, and the Navisworks models also have the quantities and parameters built into it. You know, so we don't have parameters built into this because this was this was put together in about a, a week and a half's time. You know. <laughs> from GIS data. Right. You know, so right. Getting right. from GIS to this in a week and a half, and we didn't embed very much into it. Yep. But, but for instance, you could have the uh, power consumption of each building. You could have the rainwater ca uh, capture uh, possibilities from the roof mm -hmm. surface, uh, the photovoltaic potential, uh, you know, uh, uh, the uh, 
area based on the four plates. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if that's classified by occupancy group, then, then right. we know, uh, and then we can drive that to the uh, uh, construction uh, cost. That's, that's what the I'll be working on. Yes. The, the construction area. cost will be done it's basically on a per square foot basis. Like yeah. square foot basis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Construction well, cost would be high. Yes. In our, then we can well, our work purpose, off of that Otherwise, I'll have to go with some expenses on the floor as a base case. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. Once you get to that detailed design stage. And then we can use that as a base and then we'll make modifications to it based on our market study, market analysis and then put in the uh, sustainability features or whatever that Dr. Clayton was just mentioning and pro you know, provide different schemes that hopefully can link to a sensitivity, a sensitivity analysis for you. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's what yeah. we have to do to graduate and to pass Dr. <laughs> or Professor Booth's class, but it's also a lot of fun. Yeah, and, and, so. <laughs> I will file them. <laughs> he will, too. Like he's already threatened, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> I mean, Syed's focus is for his PhD is to look uh, at this uh, these sensory issues mm -hmm. yeah. in an urban right. landscape. So he'll, cool. he'll work on um, on parametric models to, for instance, change the spacing of trees, uh, change the width of sidewalks, change the facades, and right. then we can have people walk through it and ask them which one you like best. We want it to be like Inception, but right. I don't think it's <laughs> quite going to be there yet. Uh, Jung Bum, his PhD, is looking at the zoning and building requirements. So, you know, if you were to change the setbacks, kind of globally see what that happens across the whole district. If you were to change the occupancy mixes that are allowed, what would that happen? Uh, what would that do? If you change the height restrictions, mm -hmm. you know, what, what would that cool. do? And it would ripple out to those those uh, economic and financial analyses. Mm -hmm. so. It just looked like Houston. <laughs> uh, we were talking to the people who, who were doing the rise, and they said that College Station uh, had no height limitations. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So well, it could be Houston, you know. Yeah. I mean, all of that's interesting to us, and we're probably at a good point. And, um, you know, if you have an interest in using Campus Point, where we have to sort of be careful as sort of what information yeah. is public and what's not. And so mm -hmm. there's there's a level of confidentiality there, but um, um, I think in terms of the sensory, you know, we're, we're big believers in we try to create high quality differentiated assets that we think someone else can't duplicate. And, it, and at the end of the day, the simplistic idea is about creating a place where people really like to be. And if they're going to, mm -hmm. they like to be there, they're going to spend more money, they're going to stay longer, and mm -hmm. you know, people will pay more rent, and all those good things that Dr. Ruth talked about. And we, we now, with our one of our projects in Houston City Center, we now have some pretty interesting. Oh, are you working with the city center as well? He's uh, the he created it, yeah. huh? He so conceived our it. Undergraduate beam uh, students are working on the city center three projects. Oh yeah, with uh, over construction. Okay, so we had a uh, Kersey yeah, and Haley uh, Haley what uh, what's the name of the engineering company? Uh, Hanswelly. Yeah, Hanswelly yeah. and uh, Hoare. Yeah. Came to my BIM class last week. Right. Okay. Presentation. Um, so yeah. we have we have so what's interesting about the plans and um, if if you go back to city center, a lot of people know they like it. They don't know why they like it. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people tend to look at architecture. But if you know if you ask, I think either of us, what we're probably proudest of, a lot of it is the scale of the space. Mm -hmm. There's a reason it feels good to be mm -hmm. in it. And mm -hmm. that is what a lot of this can get to is, it, you know, is, is there, there are dimensions and scales and, and, and interactions with buildings that make a place feel good versus, you know, I mean, we've gone to tons of projects and researched them and we can tell you why the height and spacing yeah. of a building mm -hmm. is wrong, you know, versus what feels right. And uh, so, they, you know, these tools are pretty amazing to be able to model those quickly and get a sense of right. what that scale yeah. feels yeah. like. So and and, and yeah. we're, we're very <laughs> cognizant of the, you know, proprietary aspects and yeah. stuff. As, yeah. as a, the university, you know, it can all be hypothetical. Right. It doesn't, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, we can we can take the uh, development and way off in a completely different direction, you know, yeah. and it's fine for us. Right. Yeah. Uh, we don't have to yeah. show what yours is going to look like. We you know, have found some others that we yeah, can no, use no. just to provide the example. Right. So it's whatever. Now, you now, want. now, on the other hand, you know, Dr. Kang has rented his 
been paid out. Right. So <laughs> there are those opportunities as <laughs> well. So we, yes. you need oh, it's great. portable. Is that what he said? <laughs> no, you come here for now. We, oh, we, uh, uh, now well, we have a uh, meeting but, with, yeah. uh, you know, with the uh, you know, uh, rental companies, the contractors, right. uh, uh, architects. Show them what you're trying to get. You know, right. uh, or well, I think there's. Like that, so. I mean, when we were ground leasing the land, so we didn't buy it, obviously. So the university is still very much our partner yeah. in terms of approvals and so I mean there's a lot of border regions that are yeah. very interested we get a lot of calls and keep them in the loop yeah. and so I think just from being able to showcase this technology to some of the people inside the university yeah. um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an interesting opportunity mm -hmm. I don't know if any of the border regions well, are more than happy to help you guys out yeah. Yeah. the president came and saw it right yeah, yeah the president came here mm -hmm. You know, cut the tape. Jonathan, it's going to make a lot more sense if they see it with a project which yeah, they have an interest in it. Right. So, I mean, I'm, I'll be totally blunt with you. I mean, yeah. your project's of interest because it's of interest to the university. Sure. It's, you're also of interest to me because you did do all that work on right. City Centre and the students in all my classes get to see, the, you know, the the fruits of putting your consultant team in a plane right. and route marching them around the country. Right. Um, and this team of, most of this team have actually seen your work, so they've been fully briefed on what you've done. Um, so they know who you are, right. and they know what you're capable of doing on Campus Point. And, and, and Jonathan's also of interest because he's a former student of, right. as I understand, the construction science is that right? And the MSLB. And environmental design. Sean's also. Sean's also. and Master's in Architecture. Is that right? Oh, okay. So it's a pretty strong, strong team. So you have it right. One other thing that we should just make. Give me the application. So it's all one happy family. Box one, are you an Aggie or not? And it says, if not, do not go to the That's not true. Just before right, yeah, Julian so takes you into the details of the yeah, scheme well, here, just Julian, just before we get on to this, this Julian, easy. just wait a minute. Right? Um, one thing you should also know is that work is also being done by Dr. Clayton and his team on crowd simulation. Right. So um, looking at how people respond to place, the things you were talking about in terms of the, right. the configuration of the space and what that does to people in terms of their route selections, their pace of walking, now, it has interest to the university, obviously, because it can minimise the amount of time between classes. So there's a tremendous efficiency element in that. It has huge potential, obviously, for retail because yeah. you know the the size and frequency of use of the ant track is you know right. in direct proportion to the retail spend. And you get down to details. I mean, we bought a project recently in downtown Houston, so we're going through a renovation. But one of the things is how do we how do we get restaurants to get excited about building patios? We're actually talking about putting on this mini patio symposium because yep. there are patios that work and there are patios that don't work. And what we don't want is empty patios. That sends the wrong message. But mm -hmm. it's all those little details about what, you know, a patio can be a great place to be or yeah. it can be a pretty unattractive place to be. And uh, as a friend of mine says, that he owns a, works for a restaurant chain, he calls it, some patios are the penalty box. You know, it's <laughs> like the last place you want them to yeah. seat you, whereas other restaurants, that's the place you want to seat or sit. And, all those so going down the track, if you're interested, we'd be interested in partnering with you on those symposiums. If you wanted yeah. to run, you know, a Texas A&M symposium on something like that, yeah. we would be delighted to work with you yeah. and perhaps develop up this thing yeah. for that specific purpose. Um, on the Campus Point site, um, Dr. Clayton has already commissioned his students to do uh, a, a model, a detailed model, a physical model, because what you haven't seen is there's a physical model of this as well. Right. For Design Week, we actually produced a, a physical yeah. model out at the ranch. Um, yeah. so and, and, and I think the, a powerful thing is the physical model is produced from the same files as MK. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to create a single stream of editing right. and management of information that then can split into physical models, into construction yeah. documents, into, into uh, 